what's really special about this competition is the fact that it is a living and breathing competition. The most fascinating thing for this competition is that how many great talents we've got. To enjoy the violin, that the violin really becomes a part of your body. When you use that energy um, in the right way, you can really achieve the impossible. They know that they cannot just show off, but that they really have to have to show their musicianship. The purpose of this event is, is actually educational. The Mandarin competition brings excellence to any city it, uh, it visits. Results are completely irrelevant. I think what matters is that everybody's playing their hearts out all the time. The Mandarin competition is, is an absolutely wonderful event. I've been involved in it since the beginning in 1983, and it's regarded as the world's leading competition for young violinists. Uh, it's an incredibly exciting event to work for and to see its development as from the beginning in 1983 to actually going all over the world. If we were what we say we are, which is the world's leading competition for young violinists, we couldn't just have the competition in England every year. We needed to take it around the world to where the young violinists are. So we dipped our toe in the water and went to Cardiff in 2008. We then went to Norway in 2010. We went to Beijing following the Olympics having been in Beijing. And in some ways, you know, we are the Olympics of the violin. And then we went to Texas in 2014. And then we said to ourselves, well, wait a minute. This is great, but we are, after all, a British charity. So we need to bring the competition back to London. And what better year to do that than in 2016, which is the centenary of Menuhin's birth. The first thing to start with is that this is actually a violin competition for young violinists. So we have two different sections, we have two different categories, one is junior and one is senior. And the junior one is the starting age, I think the youngest competitor this time is 11 and goes up to 15. And what amazed me the most is that, I mean sometimes I always wonder that how is the 11 or 12 or 13 year old able to not only technically, because that you can practice, not only technically playing the violin, but also musically, and also their stage presentation, how natural and how confident they are on the stage, and how can they actually own the stage and, and attract people's attention, I mean, to their performance. This is quite, it's really unbelievable. I mean, I think something they are born with.
I'm very passionate about the event. Working with young people and the stars of the future, nurturing the talent is really, really important to me. It's really important to take on board the character of the competition in each country, to, to not just to superimpose our ideals, but to, get the, to empower the host city to add their, their ideas on the competition as well. So it, it, in a sense, it reinvents it for us every two years. The Menuhin competition brings excellence to any city it, uh, it visits first. And, um, and second, it gives a role model to young musicians to aspire to and to look to look up to, so to speak, both male and female, which is um, really important. It was just lovely and seeing the competition develop from the early days to now. The standard is unbelievably different and the whole thing was much smaller. Because if you see so many different nationalities uh, that are represented uh, in this year's 308, I think, or nine competitors, uh, I think it's extraordinary to see that um, you see a, a universal language being spoken, which is music. Uh, spoken from the heart of such young and extraordinary prodigy children. Um, they give so much to the audience that perhaps the adults may take some clue, uh, may take a clue on uh, what to give themselves to the world that surrounds them. The very first time I was surprised how friendly everyone was at this competition and uh, that was because the philosophy of this event is to serve or to help every competitor, every participant. It's not about winning, but about educating it, it about helping any participant to, to improve. And uh, already by in the first round, you get a performance chance. impressed me in this competition, I must say, was not that there were so many uh, technical skills, but there were real musicians here. I mean, they, they didn't just pay, pay attention to the fact that they are playing all the right notes, but um, I really had the feeling that, since also the, I think it has something to do with the fact what kind of repertory a competition asks for. I mean, this is very special here. It's not Tchaikovsky and Sibelius in the finals. It's Dvořák, which I'm, uh, since I am half Czechoslovakian, I'm always very grateful when I see that on the program. Um, the fact that you have Bartok solo sonata and um, also in the juniors you have Vivaldi Four Seasons and not Bruch and Sansons Three. Um, I think that already attracts other young musicians than maybe other competitions do because they know that they cannot just show off, but that they really have to have to show their musicianship. A candidate must possess an excellent technique. But once that is out of the way, um, the most important thing to me is that the competitor will move me in the service of the music. So I would look for playing that was stylistically appropriate to 
the piece of music so you don't play Mozart in the same way as you play Tchaikovsky. Um, I'm also looking for somebody that has got a personal viewpoint on the music because I can't stand it when everybody sounds the same. So I'm looking for somebody who is a real individual but who does it in such a way that you're not aware of that person playing, you're just aware of the music sounding wonderful. The most important thing about doing something like this is getting the feedback, getting information, collecting data about what happens to you on stage and getting input from people like us how to, how to continue developing those young talents. And so if they take that really to heart and can absorb it and put it into their playing and learn from it, then we've all done our job. For the younger players, it's of course it's, it involves um, technique perfections, the music, the, their musical abilities, but also, very importantly for me, it's their potential. What can they do? Sometimes when it gets hard, I sometimes just feel like I don't want to do this anymore, but I know like in my heart I really do want to do this. I'm just so, like really tired that moment, but I really do want to like play for the audiences and make music like my life, like be a soloist when I grow up. The fascinating story is that two years ago in Austin, you were invited to compete at the menu and you didn't go further than the initial round. But you've often said that it was something from that experience that brought you back to Menyun here, that drove you over these two years. What was it that you took from 2014? And what was it that you came to 2016 with? In 2014, I think I got a taste of what an international competition was like, because I really didn't know, because I had only gone to like neighborhood national competitions so far. And when I came to international competition, I was like, wow, like these kids are like really good. I can't just like practice and go. So, and the judges' comments actually really helped. Like, some of them said, like, it was a little bit too, like, monotonous, like, kind of boring when I played. So, they said, like, my intonation was a little bit wavering, and I kind of knew that, too. So, I tried to fix up, like, everything and come back. And I think last two years ago was a really helpful experience because I finally got, like, it was my first international competition, of course. And I think this year I've like gotten a taste more. I think results are completely irrelevant. I think what matters is that everybody's playing their hearts out all the time. And I, I firmly believe that a different jury, a different day would yield a different outcome. And that they should not be defining themselves by results of competitions. They should just be searching for meaning in the music and developing their own personalities and be just glad for any opportunity to play the music. The judges themselves take part. We've each performed and we've given master classes. We've given consultations with the players so that hopefully by the time each person leaves the competition at whatever stage they leave it, they will still feel that they've gained hugely from the experience and I hope that nobody would feel that they went away um, a poorer person. You continuously always have to learn, you always have to be curious and you have to uh, want to get better and still look for something new. When you're satisfied with your skills or your performance or your concert that you played yesterday, then it's over already. <laughs>
I think it's rather it's just a way of um, gaining exposure and it could be a launching pad, but it's ultimately what the winner does with the exposure. Winning is not enough. Winning is really just the beginning. And then, then it's up to the, to the player to keep developing and keep delivering the music beautifully. I remember when I won Manuhin competition, there were quite some important concerts coming up. And I remember my debut with Chicago Symphony with, uh, in Minneapolis, in Japan, in wherever. Um, Munich as well. Uh, for the first time, Sibelius Concerto, I played with Lauren Marcel and the Bar uh, Bayerische Rundfunk simply because she always said, don't take anything old, take something new, learn something new and go on stage. And that was very tough, I have to say, um, also for the nerves that, you know, your first time Sibelius Concerto is not with some B or C class orchestra, but it's with Lauren Marcel. Um, but it was also very healthy. For me, they've always been a source of inspiration and uh, improvement, self-improvement. I've always looked towards competitions during the year as something, a goal to look towards, to work towards. I'm going to Berlin to play the Bach Concerto and it's going to be my first time to play a whole concerto with an orchestra and I'm actually really nervous. The Bach Concerto is actually really fun to do and I can really connect with the music and I like when I do that because I, I feel like I'm re I can really connect to the audience and the music and play for Bach. I think he would have been proud of it, the way it's come on. He came to the, some of the competitions in the early stages and I think he would have been proud of what's being played at this competition. And it is also in, in times of difficulty in the world, uh, also a very positive message that, uh, according to what Lord Menuhin said, music is uniting the world and differences are man-made. So, to some extent, let's go back to uh, what man can also make and make peace and uh, develop through the youth that excellence and that role models. I asked one of the mothers in 2004 if her son had enjoyed it. She said yes, and they've all been exchanging email addresses, was her reply. And, you know, the kids were getting to know each other. They were translating for each other. Language wasn't a barrier. It was fantastic. First prize goes to Tsiu He. We feel that the competition that has just finished in London has been a great success, um, measured by the enthusiasm of the audiences, the press and media coverage that we've had, um, and we're looking forward to taking the competition next to Geneva in 2018, and who knows where after that. I love to play for the audience. If many people come here, I, I love it. And then I can play what I want, and I feel just, just great. I like to play more con concerts, and I want to be a um, famous violinist, and so a musician. So I think it is um, back to excellence. It is back to um, Piece because I, I don't see musicians throwing violins at each other. 
uh, but um, they go and, um, and, and really show the, show the world um, what they can give instead of what they can take and I think that is a great message. Thank you.